Hi guys, this channel is for ghost stories. Do you believe in ghost? Well, modern science has not been able to discover or uh, you may say they don't believe in ghost. But deep down inside in our human minds, we do believe that there is something which is called ghost and which we are scared of. Well, there is God, there is ghost, where there is night, there is day. So I think deep down inside the human mind tells us that yes, there is something, some supernatural energy or something which is under our bed or in, in our room or it's following us. So that's the spirit which we have inside out. That's the uh, supernatural intuition which we have in our mind and which we carry out throughout our life. So this channel is for those people who are interested in listening to ghost stories and I hope you like and hear uh, the the audios and the videos so if you like it guys please leave a like please uh, subscribe and please don't forget to share while well, your friends are there who might also be interested in listening to ghost stories when you come down from your office when you're alone just sit back and relax and put the headphones on and enjoy so let's start today's ghost stories the story is about a guy who thinks something is coming for him so the name of the story is something's coming for me let's start something's coming for me i know that sounds crazy but i feel it getting closer i'm too scared to tell anyone i know because i'm afraid it will come true if the words leave my lips which is why I'm writing it here anonymously. Just like the shadows, I am invisible here. I have never been overly religious, but I have been keeping a Bible under my pillow. I kidded myself that if I keep my hand on it, I will be safe. It never stopped. The sound of the dragging feet on the carpet in my hallway. I assumed they were feet. It happens after midnight when everyone else is asleep apart from me. It all started after I did the thing. The thing I wouldn't mention. I was only dabbling but even that must have been a sin. I know that something was watching me. It's been stalking me every night, staying in the shadows and creeping closer and closer. First I hear the strange beat clackling and chattering. I can't think what else that sound could be. If that's not bad, the claws being dragged along the walls sent shivers straight down my spine. My father thinks the scratches are from my brother when he sleeps walk. I let it be, but my brother looks at me helplessly, taking the blame. But why? Maybe he knows my fate. The thing is, that thing doesn't visit him. Every night it's getting closer. I can hear the whizzing and the smell, the sulfur weft around my head as I bury my face into the pillow. Last night I heard the demons whispering. The demons who accompany that thing when it stalks. I hear the words coming to me in waves while my face digs deeper and deeper into the pillow. They tell me that the time is Nick. I have a hunch that means any time now. They tell me I already know that there's nothing I can do to stop them unless, unless I can find a substitute, a sacrifice. I have already stepped over the line. My soul is already forsaken. So there is nothing stopping me from doing the unthinkable. 
when that evil thought crept into my mind, I heard the sinister footsteps halt. It spoke volumes to me. Then the voice became excited and cheered me on. Yes, that's it. Do it. When I heard the footsteps going back down the hallway and stopping at my brother's room, I let out a sigh of relief. I haven't noticed that the Bible was gone. The boys were whispering again as my brother's bedroom door opened. He only screamed for a moment. Then his voice was muffled and soon silenced. The thing shuffled back down the hallway with the voice stating simply, Two, four, one. The clacking of the beak was residing as the sharp claws on the wall trailed off. When I finally got up and went to my brother's room, I saw that he was gone. The sheets were on the floor covering a pea stand. I was surprised that there was no blood. I knew that it was pointless telling my parents. When I got back to my room, I saw the Bible on the floor. When I bent down to grab it, I saw the words scratched on the cover. Two, four, one. I tossed it in the garbage and tried to go back to sleep. Last night, after lying to my parents and telling them that my brother was staying at a friend's place, I got into bed and wept. After falling asleep, I woke up to hear the dreaded footsteps and chattering beat. There were two sets of claws scrapping the wall, two sets of footsteps dragging along the carpet. My blood froze when I recognized one of the voice. Two for one. The angry, rasping voice belonged to my brother. Not long now, there was no Bible to clutch and my face only buried into the pillow for a second until it was ripped out from under me. I know I am damned. When they are coming back to me, they like to tease. But any night now, I will join my brother. Something's coming for me.